Right, so we're back with a, another short update on this Hudson Hud, Hudslope build uh, in 16mm scale. Um, this is where we were last time, um, a model that you saw running um, on the track. Um, I've not printed any more parts for it yet, um, I've done some bit of design work but not printed anything yet, but I have spotted a couple of, well one issue and found one solution to something that was confusing me. Um, so let's start with the issue first. Uh, and this is, I was looking at the, the kind of engine bay I guess, uh, where the motor is, and thinking oh there's loads of space in there, be no problem fitting uh, batteries and uh, control electronics etc. And then of course if you turn it and look at it from the front um, you can see how narrow um, it gets as it gets um, further up, which means by the time you get above the motor actually there's not very much space. And this piece is solid, um, at least partly because of this this cutout where the um, exhaust um, fits. So there, there looks like there's quite a lot of space, but when I actually try and fit um, all the things, that doesn't necessarily turn out to be true. So if we, we've got the the loco, so we've got a, I've got a standard kind of uh, lipo battery. Um, <clears throat> nothing particularly special about this, and this does fit nicely, um, kind of lengthways, in here and is behind um this upright so it will fit and the 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 panel across that will will fit there that's not a problem um but the problem is if we then turn this round that leaves just essentially this space behind the motor for any can kind of control electronics if i kind of keep this piece in the right place with my hand uh like that um and my control of choice for my the previous 16 millimeter uh models i've built um there's only been a couple but I've, in both of them i've used um the local remote um so this is essentially, um, it sets up a little wireless network, you connect to it from your phone, it serves up a web page and you control the loco through your phone. There's a, there's a video um, in one of the previous um, playlists um, showing this being wired up, I think, into the Hudson Hunts Skip Loco. Um, I'll, I'll link to it in the description. And it's really nice and straightforward. This is actually uh, one I picked up. I didn't buy this one brand new. I picked this one up uh, second hand through a sale on a forum. Um, and it's a slightly smaller version than normal because it doesn't have um, plugs wired, uh, soldered on for the uh, battery and motor wires. They're, 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 they're soldered directly to the board, which makes it a little shorter. Um, but the problem is this doesn't fit. So if I put it at the side of the motor, it sticks out because the motor is central. Um, and obviously the, the actual the engine bay isn't, it's off to one side, uh, which is why there's more space on this side for the for the battery to fit. Um, it also doesn't necessarily fit across the the loco you can see uh, behind it. Um, it won't fit upright um, either, it's too tall even though it's the shorter version. It will fit on a bit of an angle, um, but again it's tight uh, and I'm worried about it shorting against the motor and things. Um, so I'm going to have to have a bit of a rethink um, about exactly how all this is going to fit. Um, I can't fit it above the motor either, even if I bent the tags down, there's not enough space. Uh, the same really kind of goes for the motor, the, the, the battery. The battery might just uh, fit, especially if I sh kind of shaved a little bit off the bottom of this piece uh, and bent the tags down, I might have to just get the motor to fit, but it's, it's the battery to fit, sorry. Uh, but it's unlikely. Um, so I think um, having moved the motor in front of the, the front axle um, so that it didn't intersect with this piece. I think what I'm going to have to do is put it back in the more kind of traditional um, position between the two axles, um, put a cutout in here on the back of this piece here uh, so the motor will fit and then that will give me a kind of a slightly bigger uninterrupted space. Uh, the battery will still fit on one side um, because obviously I'm, I'm just moving the battery kind of that way. No, sorry, the motor that way. Um, so the battery will still fit there. But I'm hoping that it gives much more space in front of the the motor um, to be able to fit the kind of local remote, even if it's on a slight slight angle. Um, we'll have to see. But I think that's the only the only solution to that problem really. There isn't anywhere else to put it. I mean, if we look underneath, um, I mean, there's a nice big space here. But the footwell, when I get to it, I promise I will get to it. Um, is going to put a big a big dent in this space. Um, the other option might be, of course, that if I move the motor uh, from here to essentially between the wheels here, there might be space for either the electronics, it doesn't look particularly likely, um, or the battery. Again, it doesn't really, doesn't look like it'll fit 
particularly it's a bit too tall um sorry my arm in the way they're both a bit too tall um so i don't think that's going to be going to be an option but i think i'm going to have to to do another version of the chassis with the motor back where it was um and then see whether i've got enough space in here um well yeah we'll have to have a look i mean as i say once i've moved if i move the motor to here then in theory i can also kind of hollow out this end here um to get a little bit more height at the front in the space uh, which hopefully should give give space for the local remote because ideally i'd like to be able to this is what i want to use anyway um and i'd like to be able to possibly use um one with the plugs on it or at least be able to recommend the plugs to to other people um so that's the the kind of the flaw <laughs> i discovered uh, but i think i've got i think i've got a working solution for that so we can kind of we can kind of move on from that um now the other thing if you remember from the last video was that i said i printed out some um copies of the etched artwork from the four millimeter version to see how they would work on the 16 millimeter and what i found was that they don't fit they're they're too small they seem to be basically the size of the hole um, so they fall inside. I've marked this one with an X, so I know that it's the the old one that's not right. Um, turns out this was me being uh, rather stupid. Um, so I drew the artwork up originally in um, Inkscape, which is a, an SVG editor. Um, and then that was um, exported to a PDF uh, and then used for the etching process. And that all worked really nicely. Um, what I'd kind of not really noticed when I load, when I opened these up, this file up in, in, in Inkscape ready to kind of scale it up, I got a warning um, about it being opened, uh, being originally d done in an older version of Inkscape and that there was an issue um, using it in the newer versions. Uh, and I basically just selected the default options without really reading what was going on. It turns out the difference between them is in the dots per inch um, that's used to render the files. Now, if you're doing um, just artwork for graphics on the screen, it probably doesn't make too much difference to you. Uh, things will look identical, they'll just be a slightly different size and you possibly won't even even notice. But also, obviously, if I'm relying on printing these out at a specific size um, so that I can use them for etching or as templates for cutting them out manually, um, then changing how, how big they are is obviously a problem. So one of the settings that I didn't use last time was to actually scale the parts up to take into account the change in dots per inch. And it's a, I think it's a change from 90 dots per inch to 96 dots per inch. So there's a, there's a bit of a scaling. So if we take this one out, what I've now done is I've printed another version in the new, in the new size, letting it do the, the scaling. And you can see that they're, they're, um, they're obviously a little bit taller. Uh, and a little bit, um, a bit longer as well. If I do that, so you can see the, the difference in length. It's not much, uh, but it's a, it's a little bit. I don't know what it is in percentage terms, but it's definitely enough to make it so that these things are now the right size. So if I lay it in the right place, you can see now it's overlapping both sides and it's fitting nicely against the the cover over the top of the engine bay. So that's that's solved the the problem of the uh, of the artwork there um so yeah so that's that's i think brought us up to speed um yeah so as i say i've got a bit more a bit more printing to do uh, a bit more design work to do to figure out exactly what i'm going to do about this space issue uh nice thing is new bottle of um elegoo water washable resin which is what this is printed in uh arrived yesterday um i was running low there's a tiny little bit left in my existing bottle but a new bottle arrived yesterday uh, so that's good. So I can carry on and carry on printing uh, and hopefully I'll, um, I'll I'll figure this out. As I say, I'm going to change where the motor mount is, um, sort out the footwell and sort out how I can affix this piece um, if I don't need the, the screw hole anymore. Um, probably with clips like I did for the radiator uh, before I do any more printing. Uh, try and do try and fix it, solve a few problems all at once rather than uh, wasting a bunch of uh, of resin on something that I know will essentially be thrown away. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of where we are. We've got kind of one step forward with working out why the artwork's wrong for the etches, and uh, one step back by uh, having to redesign the the motor position again. Uh, but I think if I move this, as I move it this way, it takes it cuts into this piece about halfway, um, which means there should be quite a lot more kind of contiguous space at the front. Um, which should give me a lot more, a lot more room. Certainly for kind of putting something 
on a bit of an angle. If I put that on an angle like that, you can see it fits fits in much less than half the half the space. Um, so, or even you know, if I put it kind of that way around, uh, again, it's fitting. There's, there's possibly it might fit up against the the motor that way when when the motor's half embedded in in here. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully, as I say, hopefully I can get it to sort of fit with the version of the local remote that actually has the the plugs on. So if anybody else wants to use um, local remote in, in theirs, if, if I print parts for anybody else, I'll know for certain that it fits. Um, so yeah, so hopefully another day or so, uh, and I'll have sorted out the the footwell uh, and a few of the bits, printed some more, and we'll have a we'll have another update. But for now, that's 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 where we are.